Hey, what's up, friends? It's James. Welcome back for another Power Yoga class. So uh, with this 60-minute class, we get to take things slow and we get in really deep. We're focusing on our strength, on our flexibility, and our balance. And then, of course, with yoga, we get to focus on mindfulness. So I want you to come find a cross-legged position on your mat. You can definitely uh, prop yourself up on the edge of a block if you want. And however you're doing the cross-legged position, one of the things you got to focus on is that you're finding the front edge of your sit bone. So you can pull the flesh away or you can walk back a little bit. From there, bring your hands down on top of your legs. And then we're going to do a little bit of cat and cow from a seated position. So round your back. And then on an inhale, you're going to lean forward, lift up super tall. And as you exhale, roll your shoulders out and lift up to your chest. We'll do that a couple times. So inhale, round your back, lift up. Exhale, roll it out, lift up. Nice job. Okay, one more. Inhale, round through your back, press to your legs, lift up. Exhale, round it out, stretch out through your chest. Awesome. From there, close your eyes and then just relax your hands where it feels comfortable. You should feel that nice length from your sit bones all the way up through the back of your neck. We'll deepen our breath. This next uh, breath exercise is called the Dirga Swasam Pranayama. It's a three-part breath. So release your air all the way out to empty. And then breathe into your low belly, into your low back. And hold. Breathe into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back. Hold there, fill all the way up to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Once you've got your full breath, just relax. And then like you were quieting a child on your exhale, shh, all the way down to empty. Take it all the way down to the bottom, squeeze it out, and then we'll do that one more time. So inhale to your low belly, your low back. Pause, breathe into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back. Hold there, breathe all the way to your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Hold and relax, and then if you'd like, just sip in a little more air to top it up. Hold, and then that same exhale. Shh. Once you hit the bottom, we're going to start ujjayi breathing. So inhale through your nose, slow and deep like you're sipping the air in through a straw. So filling from the bottom, smoothly going all the way up to the top. And then on the exhale, slowly breathe out your nose, but like you're fogging up a mirror. And again, slowly releasing from the top, bringing it all the way back down. As you're sipping air in or you're fogging up a mirror, what it does is engage the muscles in the back of the throat that narrows how you pull in or narrows how you release back out. And as you do this breathing technique, you're going to start to hear the sound of hollow wind or the sound of ocean waves. And that's no one you, that is a sign that you have the breath down. You've got the technique. When we start to control our breath, we start to practice mindfulness. So this breathing is the base of everything that we do. It's our guide for our practice. So please just take what works for me and leave the rest behind and let your breath be your guide. Nice. Bring your eyes open to a soft gaze up front. And on your inhale, stretch your arms wide, reach up tall. And on your exhale, take a twist over to the right, bringing your right hand behind you and the left hand to the outside of your right knee. Inhale to reach up tall in space, lengthen your spine. And on your exhale, just twist from center and take your gaze back across your right shoulder. Watch that you're not leaning back into your right hand. You should be able to sit upright without the right hand to the floor. But it is back to the floor behind you as a point that you're gently pulling against or pushing against. You can do that with both of your hands. And then when the exhales come inside of this twist, that's when your body is going to be able to release slightly deeper. So your gaze will twist slightly more towards the back of the room. And 
and you can feel it as you're taking those full inhales and those full exhales you're going to feel this gentle twist and untwisting in your spine massaging out your body And I want you to experiment today with what the top of your breath feels like and the bottom of your breath feels like. My favorite neck stretch, from here just tilt your left ear forward to your left shoulder so you're lengthening out the right side of your neck. And then you can lift your chin up in space to find the front edge of your neck or let your chin come forward and down to find the back edge of your neck. Stay with the breathing. And as we explore what the top of the breath feels like and the bottom of the breath feels like, it's going to feel different from the beginning, you know, to the middle, to the end of class. It probably already feels different right now just after having worked it a little bit. It's amazing how when we sit in these poses and we breathe and we stretch, we can feel the body shifting and opening. Get down to the end of the breath that you're on. And on your inhale, take your arms wide, reach up tall, breathe in. And as you exhale, we'll switch that twist out to now bring your left hand behind you and the right hand to the outside of your left knee. Once hands are positioned, inhale to lengthen your spine up nice and tall in space. And on your exhale, twist from center and just take the gaze back across your shoulder. So your inhale might pull you slightly away from the twist, and then the exhale, that's where we're getting to go deeper into the twist. Watch that your shoulders aren't caving down and in. Keep that nice posture while you're here. This is all a really nice check-in for you and your body, where you can feel those places that need stretch, that need the breath. All right, so to get into the left side of your neck, just tilt your right ear forward to your right shoulder, lengthening and stretching. You could again lift your chin up to find the front edge of the neck, or you could bring your chin forward and down to find the back edge of the neck. Nice. Get down to the end of the breath that you're on. And then on an inhale, take the arms wide, reach up tall in space, breathe in. And on your exhale, just draw your hands down to your heart center with that beautiful posture in your spine. Okay, release your legs out in front of you, and you're just going to take a roll out through your ankles. You can also kind of pump through your, your knees here a little bit, so bending one knee up and then letting the other one press down. And then once we got that blood flow and that circulation back into the legs, we'll move into Baddha Konasana or Cobbler's Pose. So bottoms of the feet come together, creating this diamond shape. Find the front edge of your sit bone, same way we did at the beginning of class. And then grab onto your ankles, your shins, lift up super tall, take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, you want to hinge forward and reach as far forward as you can as you bow. So you're pulling your chest down towards your feet, and at the same time, your gaze is going down, and the crown of the head is extending forward, bringing the spine out from the hips. Your hands can slide down to your feet, wrapping around them like you're reading a book, or to your toes, or to the ground. I love letting the elbows give a little press down to the insides of the calves, right up close towards the knee. And then again, it's just about you and your breath inside of this pose. And 
is we're paying attention to what the top of the breath feels like and what the bottom of the breath feels like. We're noticing, you know, the way that we're opening up. It's a reminder that inside of this, the physical sensation inside of the posture, we might start out super tight as we go into this and then you just let a, you know, a few rounds of breath come in and you can start to feel, you know, the hips starting to open up a little bit, the spine starting to open forward, starting to bend down. I'm going to take those last couple rounds of breath here, friends. And then nice and slow, just start to wind your way back up. And we're going to come out of this and come into a tabletop, so facing forward towards the top of your mat. As you find your tabletop, start to work into cat and cow. And if you know where you're going, I want you to drop right into it. If you're new to this cow, you're dropping your belly, lifting up through your chest, lifting up to your tailbone. And then cat, we're arching through the back, so letting the tailbone drop down, the weight of the head come down as you lift up through your mid-back. You're welcome to breathe in a cow, exhale in a cat, or what I'm doing is kind of taking my time just to explore the two. So maybe it's a round of breath in one or a couple rounds of breath in one before you move on to the next. The other little tool I'm using to explore is just rocking a little forwards and backwards. Some people will also rock a little side to side through the hips or through the shoulders as well. You really let you really get the to let the breath lead the way here. So that deep, slow, controlled breath is leading the way for the body movement. And this is gonna feel really nice. We're gonna take this all the way back into child's pose, but I want you to go back into a cat first and use that rounding in your back and then just take your knees out a little bit wider to the edges of your mat. Tops of the feet are to the ground, your big toes come together, and then you're lowering your sit bones back towards your heels with the arms stretched out in front of you, and the forehead is down to the ground. And we want to feel that length in the spine from the sit bones pulling back towards the heels, all the way out through the forehead, all the way out through the arms. There might be moments when you're pushing forward into your hands or into your forearms, driving your sit bones closer back to your heels. You might let your forehead rock a little to the left or a little bit to the right, just giving a little massage out into it. Take those last couple rounds of breath here, friends. You're doing great. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog, but first we've got to get to a plank because the distance of your hands to your feet in plank gives you all the info you need for your hands to your feet in down dog. So out of that child's pose to a tabletop and then up to your plank. You can give some slow motion back and forth movement. That's a great way to feel into everything holding you up here, stabilizing. So hips on level with the shoulders. We want the core to feel nice and engaged. Some people talk about like tilting your tailbone up or tucking your tailbone down. Really, to me, the engagement is kind of the in-between the two of those where you're feeling that core hold in. And then rather than elbows locked, there's a micro bend, and it's a really subtle difference. You wouldn't even necessarily see that I just unlocked my elbows and gave a micro bend to them. But then biceps are toned in, 
And it's almost like you're ready to kind of launch forward off the balls of your feet. Gaze is down. Crown of the head is reaching forward. Awesome. So when you're ready, if you want, we can do a little push-up or you can go directly to down dog. The push-up, hinge forward, lower halfway down, leading with your chest. We're in Chaturanga Dandasana. And then we're just pressing back up to that plank and then shifting back into our down dog. We'll do one more of those in a second, but this is a great time to start to walk out your down dog. Your feet could come in like a little bit closer, not a ton. Hands are slightly wider than your shoulders, and you're really spread out into your palms and into your fingers. And then we're slowly walking out our downward facing dog. If you're not familiar with that, that's one of your heels lowering to the ground as your opposite knee bends, slowly stepping out, slowly walking out. All right, so we're going to do one more of those plank halfway down to down dog. So shift forward to your plank. Draw a deep breath in. And on your exhale, just hinge slightly forward, lower halfway down, hovering to Chaturanga Dandasana. And then on the inhale, press back up. Exhale, shift back, find that down dog. Okay, bend both of your knees a little bit. Reach your hips up tall away. Arms are lengthened. And then relax your head and let your biceps tone in like you're holding tennis balls between your ears and your biceps, pinning them into place. And now let's let the heels gently pull down, so lengthening the legs. So the length in the spine first, the engagement of the arms, and then those heels drawing down. Inhale your right leg back up, three-legged down dog. Let the front of your right hip bone point down and back. Watch that you're not sinking down into your left hip. You're really reaching that right leg back up tall, lifting out. Staying with that breathing. Let's do one more inhale to extend. And on your exhale, take a low lunge position. And find a really long low lunge. So right foot is right up in between your hands. Walk the left foot even back a little bit. And then we're going to take a kneeling lunge. The setup, just drop your back knee. I like to keep the back toes tucked. You are welcome to fold the side of your mat in. Or if you're working with a blanket, to slide it underneath your knee. We want to keep that long stance so that as we press our hands up to our right thigh, we lift up through our chest, you're lining your knee up over your heel. Hips are coming slightly forwards. You're pressing off that back left foot, and then you're lifting up through your chest, and you want to feel a little stretch down through the, the front of that left hip, down through your left quadricep. And then we want to start to feel as you're pressing down to the ground that you're toning your legs back and in. With all of that set up, bring your arms up in space. Start to pull your biceps back to frame your ears, pinkies forward, thumbs back. Let the arms plug into the shoulder sockets. Excellent. And then we're going to do a little tilt up in space. So you're lifting up through your chest and taking your gaze up in space, keeping that base in your legs. And there's so much engagement going on with that lower body, with the legs, that we start to feel the work of the muscles holding us in place, stabilizing. Okay, if you'd like, friends, close your eyes while you're here. If you lost that breathing, come right back into it. If you close your eyes, you might find yourself wobbling a little bit in space. It's okay, we're just stabilizing and playing with our balance. And again, it's not necessarily how far you can bend back. You know, those of you who are super flexible, it's how we're doing, how we're doing this little bend, but how we're supporting it with the muscles of our bodies. So inhale one more time, lift up, take that stretch, and on your exhale, bring your hands down to the ground. You can take, let the top of your left foot come to the earth. We're going to move this into half splits. So walk your left knee back a little bit. And then walk your right heel forwards. You can keep your, your mat folded in. I'm just going to unfold it so I you, you can see my legs really clearly. So the right foot is coming forward. And then what I, where I'm getting to is where I can press that heel down to the ground and then pull back. Some of you might go into the full splits. That's awesome. Um, for the half splits, we're focusing on just that front leg. So heel pressing down. The foot's up in space. Toes are flexing back. Now, you could do two blocks underneath your hands here. That's awesome. Or you could even do this, I've seen it, you know, with one block. 
where you've kind of got it like right in front of you here. But I like to have the arms on either side of the leg. And then um, some teachers, they'll put a lot of focus on keeping that spine super engaged while you're here, kind of like you're on a road bike. You know, others will tell you to relax the spine as you just focus on the leg. So I'll let you choose between those two today. But I want you to find a nice deep stretch here for that right leg and a balanced level of sensation. And what I mean by balanced level of sensation is that you are engaged in a deep stretch. But it's not overtaking you, you know, it's not sharp pains. It's that type of pain that comes with deep stretching that we can be inside of and we can, we can breathe with, we can spend some time with. Nice, guys. Almost there. Okay, so the release out of this is to a wide-legged forward fold facing to the left side of your mat. So unfold it if you had it folded in. All ten toes will point to the left. You can find a nice width for your stance that feels good, or, you know, length of your stance from the front of the mat to the back that feels good to you. And then you are starting out folded over, so you're relaxing your head, your gaze is behind you. And then on an inhale, we'll come halfway up. So hands underneath your shoulders, you could use your fingertips for this. You'll come halfway up, lengthening through your spine. Gaze is to the ground. Let your shoulder blades tone in like there's a, a pencil between them. And then you're finding length through the back of your neck. Get strong through the legs, get strong through your core, strong through the shoulders. And if you want, now fly your arms out like airplane wings. We want to check we're not rounding that low back. We're finding length in that low back. Palms are down in those airplane wings. Nice breathing. So give that one more inhale, and on your exhale, we'll fold forward, release down, and then just a ragdoll frame in this wide-legged forward fold. So opposite hand to the outside of opposite elbow or bicep, and letting your body just j take a little sway side to side. In ragdoll frame, you want to let the weight of your head totally relax. So you can add any little nod yes or nod no through your head that feels good. Other thing I want you to think about while you are here is that your legs are creating this structure <coughs> that you're hanging from. So there is a, a so there's strength in your legs here, pressing to the ground, drawing your hips back and up. Nice, friends. Release your arms, and then we'll take a vertebrae by vertebrae. Roll all the way up. At the end, just inhale your arms all the way up. You got a star shape. And on your exhale, we're going to warrior two to the front of the room. So point your right toes forward. You want to have that right knee right over your right heel. You can align your legs up. You know, take a second to get your heels in one line. You're pressing strong off that back left leg. Your spine is straight up in space and extending out through those arms. We want to feel that we're getting a stretch in Warrior Two. You're opening through your hips. We want to feel that we're working with our legs, both of them, to stay inside of the lunge. And sometimes I see people just having a little bit of a shorter stance, and I can tell it's kind of a relaxed place to be. In Warrior Two, it should feel, again, like you're, you're engaged on that muscle level and you're engaged uh, in, in that, that stretch that we're getting here. Arms open up. Check you're not caving the shoulders in. Nice opportunity to roll your shoulders out. You're not leaning forward through the spine, just straight up through it.
Yeah, right on with that breathing. Pressing into the right leg nice and strong, feeling your upper leg wrapping around that knee, feeling your glute engaged, pulling away from the knee. Okay, take your left hand to your hip thigh or behind you, turn your right palm to the sky, and reach your right arm straight up in space. You can add a little bend into your elbow and then take your gaze up. What you don't want is your, your spine, you know, your whole torso tilting back. You want to lift up through your arm, take, your, take it that little bend, and it would just be your head that comes back in space. Last couple rounds of breath. Nice. Give that one more inhale. Breathe into it. And on your exhale, we'll cartwheel the hands down to frame the right foot. Turn on to the ball of the left, so that low lunge position. Okay. So from here, side plank with the left hand as your base. So you can step that right foot back, stack it over the left, guide your left shoulder right above your left hand, lift up through your right arm or bring your hand to your hip. You can also place your, your knee down to the ground with your toes to the side on that left, that left leg as a kickstand here. You wanna feel that lift through your inner side body. Check that you're not sinking into your left shoulder. We're lifting out of it as you press down and spread out into your hand. Nice breathing. Remind yourself about the top of the breath. Remind yourself about the bottom of the breath. Okay, one more inhale here. On your exhale, turn to your plank. You can go directly to down dog or lower halfway down, leading forward with your sternum. And then for up dog, press to the tops of your feet. You're lifting your chest up. It's a floating back bend on your hands, on the tops of the feet. And then we can meet back in our down dog. Nice work. Once you've got that down dog in place, We've got a couple rounds of breath just to feel the stretch through your spine, through your arms, engagement through your biceps, drawing back down through your legs. We can take the left leg up on an inhale. And again, your heel is pointing, rather the, the front of your left hip bone is pointing down and back as you take the leg up. Watch sure you're not dropping into that right near that right leg. You're pressing into the ground, lifting out of it. Nice. One more inhale, friends. Lift up. And on your exhale, we've got a low lunge position. So creating a lot of nice space here between your front foot and your back leg. So that as we drop your back knee down to the ground, maybe folding the side of your mat in to give that extra cushioning, you've got a long stance to work with. Tuck your back toes so you can press off the ball of your foot. You might walk your front foot forward just a little bit, and then we're guiding the hands onto that left thigh, lifting up through your spine. So hips coming forward into it. We're not letting the knee get way beyond your heel, though. Knee is right over your heel, so you're not hyperextending. And then you're pressing off that back leg, so there is this going down, you know, going down in opposite directions through your feet, but then you're toning your thighs back in towards center line stabilizing you so you can reach your arms up in space. Pinkies forward, thumbs back, biceps are pulling back to frame your ears, and then shoulder heads are relaxing down away from the ears in the back. Another way you can think about that is your arms are plugging into your shoulder sockets. Okay, so now we'll keep all of that in place and just tilt the chest up. And it's a lift up and shine to the sky. So it's not just a lean back, it's a lift up and then shine up to the sky. If you want, close your eyes.
just playing with your balance. One more inhale, breathe into it. And on that exhale, bring your hands down. You can take the top of the right foot to the ground now. Again, feel free to keep your mat folded in for standing or half splits. I'm going to fold my mat out so you can see my legs really clearly. We're getting even more distance now between your back knee and your front foot to the point where you can press into your heel and you can really lengthen that left leg out, flexing your toes, your left toes back towards your shin. So you can be on your fingertips, fist palms, or blocks. You might be focusing as you stretch that leg out on keeping this road bike stance, letting the chest lift up, shoulders drawn down, or you might be taking more of a bow through your spine here. If you are somebody who does kind of hunch over, even if you're bowing, I want you to feel like you're reaching your chest forward and out. And maybe coming up a little bit higher is going to help you right with that. So whether you're on your palms, you go to your fingertips, or you weren't using blocks, and then you do something like that. You're doing great, friends. It's a really big stretch for the, the, the back side of that left leg. We don't need to overdo it, though, right? Just like we don't need to underdo it. Okay, get down to the end of the breath that you're on. And then your release is a wide-legged forward fold facing over to the right side of your mat. So if your mat was folded in, go ahead and unfold it. Find the correct distance of your feet from one another that feels good to you. Bow your spine. Inhale halfway up. Lengthen. Tone shoulders in. Gaze down. Exhale, refold. Hold navel to spine empty. Engage core. Reverse swan dive. Inhale arms wide and tall. Lift up. And on your exhale, we're going to take a wide-legged squat position. So bring those heels in. Feet are out at 45. Watch that you're not rolling onto the inside edge of your feet, collapsing the knees. Open the thighs up and back. Take your hands down onto your legs. Breathe tall through your chest. And on your exhale, we're going to twist to the back of your mat. So press off of that front left thigh. We've had some nice twisting in class so far, just adding on to that. But you should feel a nice stretch through your legs here. Inhale, lift your spine up tall, breathe in, and on your exhale, switch things out. Press off of that back right thigh, twist forward towards the front of the room. A couple more rounds of breath. Hold that twist, friends. You got it. All right, so we're going to inhale back up into our squat. You can leave your heels to the ground or bring your feet in a little closer and then lift the heels off the ground so you're on the balls of your feet. Hands can be at your heart center. You could open your arms wide and tone your shoulders in or press your hands to your thighs. Then as you can see here, we want to get the spine up really tall and have that nice posture with the shoulder heads rolled out. You're checking that your knees aren't collapsing inwards. You're stacking those knees up above your heels, up above your ankles. And if you're lifting your heels off the ground, try to get those heels tall as your sit bones drop low. And then we are using all that muscle support in our legs to be here. Nice breathing. Okay, almost there. Last round of breath. Okay, step back out wide. Inhale, your arms lift up. And then warrior two to the front of your mat on your exhale. So those left toes go forward. 
Line your left knee up over your left heel. Walk your right leg back a little bit. Tone your thighs in. Find all the strength around that left knee. Let your left glute engage. Pull back and up. Strong, barreling down through that right leg, right strength, pressing off down into the foot. And then those thighs gently pulling back into center line. And you can always make those little adjustments as you need to. Turn your left palm to the sky. Bring your right hand to your hip thigh or behind you. Reach your left arm up super tall. And you can add a little bend into your elbow. Tilt your head up. Take your gaze to the sky. We're in reverse warrior. If you lift it out of your lunge, get right back into it. Let that right shoulder drop down away from your right ear. Steady with that breath. You got it. Okay, friends, breathe in, and on your exhale, you're going to cartwheel down, and you'll take that low lunge. So both hands are framing that front left foot. Once you've got both hands framing that front left foot, we're going to go to side plank. Right hand is your base. So go onto the outside edge of your right foot, stack the left onto your right, or some people will do, you know, the foot in front of the other. You can have that knee down to the ground as you kickstand. Bring your shoulder right above your hand. Lift up through the hips. Stretch that left arm up tall. Gaze could be to the side of the room or even twisting up in space. That's a nice reminder to open through your shoulder. Find that lift through the inner side body. Get into that oblique strength. You got this. One more inhale here. On your exhale, turn to your plank. Feel free to go directly to your down dog or lower halfway down chaturanga to hover. Go to the tops of your feet. Inhale, upward facing dog, bowing through your spine. Tuck your toes, lift back up into your down dog. Couple rounds of breath here, friends, inside of our downward facing dog, getting into the strength in your legs. Take a deep inhale into it, breathe in, and on your exhale, sigh out the mouth. (sighs) Lower down to your knees, drop one of your hips to the ground, bring your legs forward in space. Nice work, friends. We're going to do some uh, postures that are directly for your core muscles, designed for your core muscles. So slide your hips up a little bit, grab your hamstrings, come onto your back. Don't let your head go down, leave your head up in space so your gaze is forward and then reach your arms straight up in space. If your neck needs support, throw one or maybe both hands behind the base of the skull. But feel that flexion through your core. Nice breathing. Start to lower your legs down to a diagonal, but keep the low back pressed to the ground versus that low back arching. You could bring your palms together and reach your hands towards your feet. If you're doing that, watch you're not rounding through, caving in through your shoulders, right? We're letting the shoulder blades gently pull back as you reach the fingers forward. Again, hands can totally be behind the base of your skull. That works too. Stay with it. Okay, and then bend your knees, grab your hamstrings, lift up to your sit bones. And for Navasana, boat pose will start to reach the spine up away from the legs. And then you can keep the hands behind the, the, the legs or reach your arms forward in space, knees bent or feet forward. 
we create really nice posture in the spine in our boat pose here in our Navasana. Nice, guys. Almost there. Relax through your face. One more inhale. On that exhale, <laughs> cross your ankles. Come forward into a tabletop. A rest is coming, but for now, we're going to bring it into dolphin. So bring your elbows down to the ground. And then you can take opposite hand to grab the outside of opposite uh, tricep or elbow. And then once you can grab that, that has your elbows, that brings your elbows to shoulders distance. Now swing your arms back on parallel, forearms are to the ground, spread into your palms. And then for our dolphin, you could start out more of a forearm plank. Great place to be. And then start to walk your toes in. Hips are lifting high, lifting back and up in space. Your sternum is reaching back up towards your thighs. Head is relaxed to look behind you. Your elbows will want to go wide. Your wrists will want to cave in. Keep it at the shape number 11. So keep your arms on parallel here. Nice breathing. What's the top of the breath like here? What's the bottom of the breath? Last round. So walk your toes back. Press your hips comfortably to the floor and we're in our sphinx pose, lifting up through the chest. You could take your gaze over to the left inside of that sphinx. Nice, or you could twist your gaze over to the right, stretching through your neck. You can let the weight of the head gently fall forward as you lift up through your shoulders. And then we're gonna tuck the toes, lift the hips off the ground to forearm plank. One at a time, press the hands up so you're in regular plank. Shift back to down dog, inhale right leg up, three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, open the hip and bend the knee. Drape the toes down to the left as your knee lifts up tall. You want to watch your left shoulder is not dipping down. Your left heel is not spinning to the left. It's pointing directly behind you. Right knee is up in space. Toes are draping down so your heel is closer to your sit bones. And the inside of that right hip is pointing more to the right wall. Next exhale, work the foot up between your hands. Low lunge. Inhale, high crescent lunge. So we were here from a kneeling position earlier. As you come into it with the, knee, the back knee off the ground, you've still got those thighs toning in. You've still got the lift up through your chest. Arms pulling back to frame your ears. You've got the stabilizing going on, the individual pressure into your legs. Awesome. And then when you're ready, hands down onto your right thigh, hinge slightly forward, press into your thigh, and bring that left knee and arms up for one-legged mountain. Once you've got your one-legged mountain in place, you're fixing your gaze on an object in front of you that's not moving. Drop your left forearm at your side, belly the forearm opens the left wall. Bend your back knee, bring your heel to your sit bone. Grab the inside of the foot, thumb has the bottom, fingers have the top. And then draw your knees together and we'll engage this bind so the back leg kicks back and it pulls your arm right back in space. Right arm reaches forward and then your chest is slightly lifting up, gaze out forward. And you want to watch the left knee is not opening way out to the side. It's pulling right behind you. Beautiful.
Use your breath. Focus your gaze on one object that's not moving. Left arm is fully extended, pull it against that left leg, kicking back on it. Nice. Inhale to reach back up one-legged mountain. Breathe in. And on your exhale, just swim back into a low lunge position. Step back to a plank. Reach up to down dog. Okay, friends, from this down dog, left leg lifts up on an inhale, three-legged down dog. And then you'll open the hip and bend your knee on the exhale. So toes draping down to the side, heel pulling to sit bones. Left knee nice and tall. Front of your left hip bone pointing to the left wall. Not sinking super deep into the right shoulder or twisting your right heel out to the side. Pointing the right heel back, strong through both of your shoulders. Exhale, sends the foot up between your hands. You've got a low lunge. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Start to set up the high lunge, so set up the stability. Bring that left knee to bend at 90. Left thigh parallel to the ground. That back right heel is off the ground. You're on the ball of the right foot. Line up those arms. Plug into your shoulder sockets. Gaze is forward. You got this. And then hands to your left thigh, press into it, lift your right knee up, extend your arms up, find that one-legged mountain. Okay, so once you've got your one-legged mountain in place, we're going to do that standing bow, so your right arm drops to your side, belly of the forearm opens to the right. Bend your right knee, heel into the sit bone. Grab the inside arch of your foot, thumb to the bottom, fingers to the top, draw your knees together, and then engage your bind. Kick that leg back. Let your arm extend back, but then the hand pulls against the foot. Left arm reaches forward. Little lift up through your chest, gazes forward. You got this. If you fall out of it, no worries. Try again. Rise up, one-legged mountain. Breathe in. And on your exhale, swim back to that low lunge. Okay, you're going to step it back into your plank. Shift back to your last down dog. Nice, friends. Okay, in that down dog, take a deep breath in. Fill all the way up. You got this. On your exhale, sigh out the mouth down to empty. Come down to your sip bones. Maybe grab a little sip of water. Okay. First thing we got on our sip bones, just a seated forward fold. So heels are up towards the top of your mat. You're pressing down and forward. You can walk your sit bones back a little bit. Inhale to reach those arms up tall in space. And on the exhale, hinge forward and hook onto your feet, your ankles, maybe a towel around your feet or a strap. If you want now on an inhale, lift up like you are on a road bike. So chest is shining forward. Shoulder heads are rolled down and back. Gaze is up. And on an exhale, now refold. And that road bike position just gives a little stretch through your low back. Let the gaze go down. And remember, it's not just about getting your head down, you know, lower than your shoulders. I like to think that your, the crown of your head, your spine, you know, is com the crown of your head is reaching right out from that shoulder height. So really, it's, it's letting your chest pull closer down towards the ground as you reach forward through the head. Steady with your breathing.
Take that last exhale all the way out. Hit that in bottom of it. And then inhale to reach your arms up tall, extend your spine. Exhale, bring the hands to your heart center and then place the hands down to the ground at your sides. Shift your hips up, plant your feet, reach your arms forward, use that core strength vertebrae by vertebrae to roll down into the ground. And then when your head lands, you can just bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your knees and give a little rock. This is a great time just to massage out the hips, the sacrum, that low back. If you pull your knees close in towards you, you can feel that low back getting that massage. And if you let your knees out a little bit in front of you, it'll change it up a little bit, arching your low back. Take your feet down to the ground and just take your left ankle over the top of your right knee or thigh. For a reclined pigeon, interlace your hands around that right shin or that hamstring. And then bring your right knee into your chest, bringing your right foot off the ground. Flex your right toes back towards your shin so you start to strengthen your right ankle. And then with that right ankle strong, you can start to let your knee gently flex down. And sorry, that was your left ankle. So let your left toes flex back into your left shin. And as that left ankle gets strong, let your left knee gently flex forward. We got this. You could let your body rock a little side to side. That feels great. And again, weight of your head totally relaxed, just staying with your breathing. Uncross your left leg, send it flat out in front of you, hug your right knee up towards your right shoulder, and then we'll take a supine twist. So let your left hand grab onto your right knee, pull down over to the left, roll onto the outside edge of your left hip, right arm extends to the right, take your gaze out over your right fingertips. And again, what does the top of your breath feel like here? What does the bottom of your breath feel like here? Roll onto your back, bring your knees to your chest, just wrap your arms, give a little rock side to side. And then we'll bring the left foot to the ground, your knees up in space, cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee, and then hook your hands around the left hamstring or the left shin, left arm on the outside of the leg, and right hand in, in between the legs in that gap we've created. And now find the strength for your right ankle, so flex your right toes back towards your shin, let your right knee gently flex forward. Head is relaxed. And you can definitely find some little rocking here side to side.
What I love with that side to side rocking is maybe, you know, you lean a little bit one way and suddenly you find a, a stretch somewhere in your body and you stop and you're like, oh, there's that spot. So that I love that. There's an exploratory nature to this practice. All right, so uncross your right leg, send it flat out in front of you, hug your left knee up towards your left shoulder, and then the supine twist on the other side. So right hand grabs your left knee, pulls down to the right, roll onto the outside edge of your right hip, and then reach your left arm to the left and just twist your gaze to go over to the left. Let that left shoulder press down to the ground or at least get close to it, that's the intention. And your breath is just snaking its way through the twist. Bringing that air in to push up and then releasing out that exhale to let your body get a little deeper to it. Nice friends, bring your knees to your chest. Give yourself that last little rock outside to side on your back. You can totally take it to happy baby if you want. Peace sign fingers around the big toes. Knees open up wide. You can pull down on the frame and get that low back into the ground. Stacking the ankles above the knees, bottoms of the feet shining up in space. And then as we complete our practice, we get to move into Shavasana, our final resting pose, corpse posture. So just make yourself super comfortable here, feeling that the weight of your body relaxing to the ground, you know, covering your eyes with something if that feels good, letting the weight of the feet just relax open, letting the weight of your arms relax to the ground with your palms to the sky. You can let the weight of the head just relax out here, Close through your eyes. Stay inside of this rest, this place of stillness for just a couple of minutes.
So you start to bring some life back to your body, just moving your fingers and your toes. You can reach and extend your arms back overhead behind you, rolling out your ankles and your wrists. And then turn the weight of your body onto your side into a fetal position. Relax your head onto your arm. This is a great time if you want to grab a couple deep rounds of breath. And then keep your eyes closed and come up to a comfortable cross-legged position. Just like at the beginning of the class, I want you to find the front edge of your sit bones to root into. Roll those shoulder heads out. Beautiful, friends. Let's take an inhale to reach the arms wide, stretch up tall in space. And on the exhale, just bring the hands down into your heart center. This is a stanza from the poem Desiderata by Max Ehrman. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether it is clear to you or not, no doubt the universe is unfolding exactly as it should. Thank you for letting me guide you through your practice. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste. Okay, right on, friends. Thanks so much. Um, As always, uh, please click like, subscribe, share the video. It helps out a ton. If you'd like to make a donation for taking the class, I've got my Venmo ID, the link in the description of the video, awesome. And if you're not in a place to make a donation, no worries, this is my gift to you. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, take care, and I will catch you next time. Much love.